Hello everyone, Stan Dane here. In the first to second evolution series, we established that Lee Oswald was on the first floor of the Texas School Book Depository building near the front entrance at the time of the assassination of President Kennedy. We did this by looking at all of the most reliable evidence. We showed how the policeman Roy Truly Oswald encounter that took place near the front entrance was ultimately moved up to the second floor and we explained why that was necessary in order to frame Oswald as the patsy. We call this entire process first floor to second floor evolution. Beyond any reasonable doubt, Lee Oswald was right where he told interrogators he was right after he was arrested, and that was he was out with his boss, Bill Shelley, in front. No reliable evidence contradicts the fact that Oswald was on the first floor when the motorcade passed by. We didn't cover any photographic evidence in the first to second series, specifically any images of the unknown person seen standing in the entrance of the depository building referred to as Prayer Man. We did this because the case for Oswald being down in front, near the front entrance, doesn't depend on what is seen in a series of low resolution images. The case for Oswald's exoneration is only enhanced by them. In this video, I'll go over some of the images of Prayer Man from a few of the films taken as the motorcade passed by the depository building. Several of these are GIF images I created over two years ago to better focus on Prayer Man, who he might be, and what he might be doing. My interest in Prayer Man, and specifically the location of Lee Oswald at the time of the assassination, began in 2013 when I discovered this image that started a thread on the Education Forum that asked the question if the unidentified man in the circle, called Prayer Man because of the posture of his hands and arms, was Oswald leaving the Texas School Book Depository. Sean Murphy joined the thread right away and began laying out a series of arguments that Oswald was really down in front at the time of the assassination. This research was a basis for the first to second evolution series we recently completed. This is all covered in my book, Prayer Man, Out of the Shadows and Into the Light. I wrote the book to capture all of Murphy's great research because after the 50th anniversary of the Kennedy assassination, he disappeared from the scene and I wanted to be sure his research on the thread was preserved. The image of Prayer Man can be seen in two films, the Wiegman film and the Darnell film, named after the cameramen riding in the presidential motorcade who took those films. Up until 2013, this image from the Darnell film was about the best one of Prayer Man. And as you can see, it's a very low resolution image that's quite fuzzy. Then in September 2013, researcher Robin Unger uploaded the Darnell frames taken from a Blu-ray companion disc that was bundled with the movie JFK at the time. The quality was much better. Many thought, including me, that the Blu-ray version of Prayer Man strongly resembled Lee Oswald, especially when you zoom in, which I'll show in a minute. Since 2013, many have tweaked this particular image, the best of the Darnell images, adjusting the contrast, sharpness, etc., to try to bring out more detail. These enhancements, the first by Bart Camp and the second by Mick Purdy, show a lot of detail and are two of my favorites. This enlarged image comes from an enhancement I made for the cover of my book, Prayer Man. The purpose for all these enhancements were to try to determine the identity of Prayer Man, specifically looking to confirm if he was Lee Oswald or not. I think the resemblance is striking. Prayer Man is also seen standing in a certain pose, hands either clasped together or his arms are crossed. In this GIF, I superimposed an image of Oswald over Prayer Man. Oswald is facing the camera directly 
while Prayer Man is rotated more toward the viewer's right. But other than that, it's quite similar. This lends support for Prayer Man's arms being crossed. The whitish area, right here, is either the top of a heater inside behind the glass or more likely a reflection of Perman off the glass. This GIF is similar and was created by Jake Sykes. He drew an image of Oswald in his customary stance and he superimposes it over Perman. Now on to my GIFs that focus on what Prayer Man might be doing. These are a series of cropped images at various speeds, enlargements, and contrasts. In all of these, I try to make the images as stable as possible, and I'm no professional by a long shot here. This is more zoomed in at two different speeds. even more zoom. Here's Mick Purdy's enhanced Darnell frame for reference. The big question is, what is he doing with his hands? Is he holding something? Here's a close zoom made by Vinny, a member of Rock. If you look at all the Darnell frames that show Perman, there's a sequence of five that are the clearest. I made a GIF with these five, again to focus on what Perman might be doing. Here is the Wiegman sequence that focuses on Prayer Man, starting with this still shot to locate Prayer Man. As you watch this and see the camera pan back to the entrance, that movement was in response to one of the shots. And the Wiegman image is taken perhaps 15 or 20 seconds prior to Darnell. Perman's arms and hands are elevated. What was he doing? What might he have been holding? Here's a couple of possibilities. First, he was eating lunch and it was lunchtime. This might have been a possibility. Second, I have always leaned toward him holding a camera and taking a picture. The stance for this seems right. Here's a final look at Darnell again.
What do you think? To resolve the identity of Perman, we will need access to the original Darnell and Wiegman films so high-resolution digital scans can be performed. To illustrate the importance of this, I made this meme a while back to show how working with copies of copies is problematic. The top left image A is from a Son of the Seventh Son copy of the Zapruder film. You really can't make out much detail. Image B is from an early copy. The difference is obvious. Imagine what extra detail might be uncovered if 4K digital scans were performed on the original or first generation films. Greg Parker's Reopen Kennedy Case organization has been trying to get access to the original films for a couple of years now. All we've gotten is a runaround. Maybe someday that will change. To stay up to date on any developments on Perman, be sure to visit the Rock Forum and also visit Bart Camp's website. Bart is doing fantastic research here. I'll have links to these below. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. This is Stan Dane, and as always, keep on rocking.